Professor Joseph Morley. Morley? Did I do that right? Yeah. Close enough? Morley. Right. Uh, from ISAE in, in France. Uh, focuses on MDO, structural and topology optimization, and surrogate modeling. He's been using OpenMDO for several years now, including applications that involve uh, using DIMOS, which you'll hear about later today uh, in a tutorial, uh, for optimal control. But uh, he, he didn't participate in last night's go-karting, so we don't know if he's that good at optimal control or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, what did you get, Graham? I got third. What did you get? <laughs> um, I think his, he's been using OpenMDO uh, for his own research, but also in the classroom. So he'll have some interesting insights from a slightly different perspective to share. Thanks, Justin. Uh, so uh, I'll try to um, bring another vision of uh, OpenMDO, so uh, lower fidelities, lower uh, Num uh, number of design variables. Uh, so this is a, a common presentation with uh, two of my uh, colleagues from Onera, so Nathalie and Thierry. Um, and I'll try, of course, to present our, our research activities, but also uh, uh, what we did in uh, classrooms. So uh, I've got few few slides on, on it. So uh, <coughs> I'll try to uh, introduce myself. So I. <coughs> I have my PhD in Bordeaux, Southwest in France, and then uh, I came uh, uh, to Toulouse, so uh, where Supero is, and I start my uh, research uh, with the Onera almost uh, 10 years ago. Um, in fact, I did the same travel than uh, A380 uh, structural part. So uh, uh, at this period, you can uh, see on the road uh, this kind of structures or on the uh, gown. It was also possible to see this. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got uh, four PhDs right now, one postdoc. And I, I, I try really to uh, use and develop some uh, tools for MDO uh, in order to design a new aircraft conce concept. And um, I also try to add some new disciplines such as uh, trajectory or control because I'm a engineer in mechatronics at the beginning. But of course, um, I think structural optimization is also a, a way to uh, optimize the design to really, uh, so I really encourage uh, to merge structural fluid, etc. So on the top, you can see some nice topology optimization from uh, Pylon I did for Airbus. On the right, it's uh, what we call the explicit topology optimization. And we made a, a last paper a few days ago. And <clears throat> I also work with um, uh, some uh, ISO geometric optimization. It means uh, working directly uh, uh, with the FEM with the NURBS uh, basis as a shape function. Okay, so um, no need to uh, transform anything. You start from scratch, and here is uh, our last example on. Uh, uh, the CRM wing. Okay, so I also passed a few weeks uh, two years ago at Michigan, um, and I'll try to really explain uh, our um, methodology. So we are uh, using simulation code at lower fidelity. Okay, um, we are not. Um, we may or not use gradient for our optimization tools. And we try to have uh, several um, disciplines and I'll, I'll try to explain you uh, what we've done in this area. Uh, we also uh, organized in uh, Toulouse two years ago, um, the first European workshop. Uh, I think we were, um, I can't remember the, the number, but you have a picture there with Justin and John. <laughs> <laughs> they have a nice uh, cap right now. <laughs> um, and okay, so f I will divide my presentation to several parts. So that's normal for a prof. Uh, but I, I will uh, really try to explain you uh, what we've done in efficient global optimization, uh, the capabilities we have in multi fidelity. 
<coughs> the type of design variable we used, and also what we've made in, in classrooms. Okay, so I'll start uh, by, uh, how do we start? So in fact, we uh, use OpenMDO from the beginning, especially at Onera. Um, <coughs> and we, we did our first uh, plugin a few years ago. So I, I think it will not be in the next version, but uh, thanks to Remy, we uh, applied the co-crigging for multi-fidelity uh, five years ago in the OpenMDO. Um, so th that was really uh, uh, the beginning. And right now we are really happy with the version two. Uh, I think we develop a lot of uh, application. I'll, I'll try to show you some of our application. <clears throat> so the first application is from uh, one of my PhD. He passed also several months in Michigan. And uh, the topic was uh, on uh, aeroelasticity and uh, a way to uh, well describe a flying demonstrator in uh, aerolisticity similar, similarity, sorry. Uh, so for this, we use um, um, Nastron tools such as uh, Open Nastron, Panair, and we also saw AD flow in order to have the high fidelity uh, vision. So there is three application, model updating on top, flutter analysis, and a static uh, aeroelasticity. More recently, we try to use it for uh, space applications. So my colleague here, Anna, is developing uh, what we call the last, okay, for launcher analysis sizing tools. We are already at the beginning. Um, and we also have a project uh, where we try to develop a reusable lunar vehicle. And here, we try to add discrete variable as a choice for the strategy of this uh, re reusability. And of course, on the left is discrete variables, and then on the right, these are continuous. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but you will see more the development of Onera in the next presentation. We also try to develop some uh, preliminary design tools. So on top for regional aircraft, we did it also with uh, Prof. Martins. And uh, I'll try to um, show you a recent application of um, AIL Eco Design. And, and for this, um, <coughs> we try to derive uh, Open Error Strict version 2 uh, in order to treat the AIL uh, pseudo satellite design problem. So the power is uh, uh, solar power. And uh, in fact, the question here was uh, really to try to have a lower environmental impact on this kind of uh, structures. So we turn, uh, we transform the problem into a minimization of CO2. Uh, <coughs> so we the respect to classical uh, variable, uh, thickness, twist, geometry, etc. Except uh, that we add um, discrete variables uh, such as uh, a choice in a material database. Uh, so for example, here we use the database from Professor Ashby, uh, and we use the CES, uh, CES uh, EDUPAC uh, software. <coughs> so of course, uh, in order to treat discrete variable, we, um, as I'm working a lot on topology optimization, we use a um, um, SIMP approach <coughs> in order to add, the, to turn the, discrete database into a continuous one. So our work is really inspired from SIMP. You can see uh, our design variables, our starting points, and at least the results. Uh, so of course, you can see there is a high correlation between the CO2 impact and the wing mass. And the final, so in the database, we have um, eight uh, material classical <laughs> in uh, aeronautics. And the final is a sandwich panel. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we exchange uh, data directly using the software, uh, Echo Design Software uh, series. Um, so at the end, the optimal material in terms of CO2 is uh, the same that uh, if we made only uh, weight. 
So because battery is the most impacting on this kind of problem. So that's just preliminary result. But you can see in terms of uh, geometry, uh, it's not so far from the FBA. You can see uh, down um, the ratio of mass also are uh, quite the same. So we are uh, happy of this kind of uh, results. So here's a, a first application. And then I will try to show you um, how we uh, do our optimization. Um, in fact, we use surrogate modeling. So there is some capabilities in uh, OpenMDAO. Uh, but here I'll try to make you uh, in one slide some recipes. So the first is uh, really to have uh, a nice design of experiment, especially if you uh, have a lot of design variable, okay? So in uh, SMT, we have a, a nice uh, Latin hypercube sampling, even at high dimension, okay? So the DOE starting point is also an optimization problem, okay? So you need to start with a, a good initial data. And then you evaluate your true uh, function, which is costly in our case. And then you have two options, uh, creating a, an interpolant model or a regressive model, if you want. Um, it depends also on the uh, application. <clears throat> so uh, globally, the big picture of um, the core basis of uh, SMT is to use Gaussian process or prigging. And so we start from a, a set of uh, learning database, so input outputs relationship. And then we want to predict at X star. Uh, the tricky part is really to choose for your application the good kernel to retune your hyperparameters. And this is not easy. Um, and then the magic is here. You have the uh, mean and the variance of the estimate analytically. So um, here, you can really use the variance of the estimate in order to uh, produce a nice optimization uh, scheme. And that's the basis of uh, efficient global optimization. So you replace the standard uh, gradient-based optimality feasibility with classical stopping criteria with um, an exploration and exploitation trade-off. And you can have this kind of graph where at the beginning you try to explore. Um, and then at the first value solution, you this is a trade between continuing the exploration and a reach the optimum, so do the exploitation. And the stopping criteria is here the max budget. So for example, uh, Safran uh, give us uh, 48 hours a weekend in order to, to give the optimum value. So that, that was uh, one of the key points. So also with uh, Michigan University, we develop and apply it to um, several problems, uh, aerodynamic shape optimization, for example. And the uh, tricky part here is that you can build nice surrogate using what would call mixture of experts. It means to merge locally different surrogate. Okay. Um, and we did this uh, nine years ago already, but it's right now on SMT. And then uh, you have to use a, um, an enriching criteria and the standard one in EGO is called the ex expected improvement. So it will give you uh, the next point to uh, evaluate. Uh, so I'll show you uh, on the uh, MDO example of static aeroelasticity between uh, a flying, de flying demonstrator and a reference aircraft. Um, so at the end, we have the objective function is um, error minimization. So here is uh, the kind of uh, uh, problem we have in terms of uh, design variables, structural and geometric, and constraint, lift, stress, and uh, chord longitudinal position. So at the end, you can have uh, this kind of graph for the objective functions, which is not really um, nice, but we have some post-processing tools in order to really show the best design. And at the end, we uh, um, show this kind of result within blue as the uh, best results. So at the end, we reach um, um, a better optimum than we can find with the Kobila uh, optimizers. So just the kind of results. So 
<coughs> at the starting point, we have uh, this kind of difference in cruise and wing displacement. And at the end, <coughs> we uh, really try to update the uh, aerodin aeroelastic similarity between the reference aircraft and the flying demonstrator. So if you want to use it, you uh, can go there. Uh, there is uh, also a nice paper we did uh, for explaining this. And you have several options for surrogate modeling. You can either use um, Kriging plus PLS, RMTS from John Wong, etc., cetera, uh, gradient and then Kriging. And the focus is here uh, really to uh, focus on derivatives. And I'd I like to thank uh, Mohamed Boulel for this uh, work. Um, <clears throat> so I'll try right now to uh, show you how we derive uh, efficient global optimization method in, in order to treat multi-fidelity problem. So let's imagine you have a uh, for CFD code. Uh, so it's really linked with the previous uh, uh, presentation. Uh, with a different uh, kind of uh, function evaluation for CFD. Um, there is really nice mathematical uh, definition of uh, co-kriging or multi-fidelity kriging. You can find the formulation of Lewis, of Kennedy O'Hagan, and there is a nice one uh, a few years ago with uh, uh, Douglas Saler and uh, Karen Wilcox. And here, uh, the goal is really um, to learn the difference between uh, two codes. So for example, low fidelity and high fidelity. And I repeat, our multi-fidelity is an iterative process. You can have access to um, n number of fidelities if you want. So uh, MFIGO is a two-step approach. First, you have to evaluate the most promising points, and then uh, to evaluate the choice of uh, the level of enrichment. And all of this is uh, just uh, mathematics and optimization. So I'll try to make you uh, an example. Uh, so in blue, you have the expensive function, and in black, the cheap function. You can see the, um, the global minimum is uh, <coughs> for the expensive function is really clear for a local minimum of the cheap function. And I'll try to show you the uh, the perspective here. So uh, we have to evaluate the cost ratio. So uh, one analysis in low fidelity is, um, for example, 1,000 uh, faster than the high fidelity. And then we have the comparison between standard EGO here with the cost of uh, 15 and MF EGO, which is uh, three times lower. So on top, you can see the expected improvement. You maximize this, and you find the best next point. And the goal is here either to choose a low fidelity or high fidelity. You can see on the graph that for every high fidelity, you have a low fidelity point. So that's really important. <clears throat> so iteratively, you um, try to update with, at the beginning, low fidelity. So that's more reasonable for exploration. And then at the end, you can reach the global optimum. So that's the results on a toy game. But of course, we develop it for um, an aerodynamic shape optimization problem, a classical constraint optimization. And at the end, the results are, are, sorry, are quite good when you compare uh, EGO, MF EGO, and SNOPT. And here the ratio is approximately 1 over 200. Um, so all the points are feasible, and you can uh, see that our results is quite the same than SNOPT. So at the end, you have this kind of graph, okay? So not really easy to understand uh, compared to standard one, but uh, we have to work on the uh, post-processing of these graphs. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, optimization uh, algorithm can really help to not use high fidelity uh, each time. So that's really interesting for us. Uh, so the partial conclusion on SMT, uh, so reducing an industrial costly cost code, sorry, is really interesting, uh, especially when you are in a collaborative project. So we we'll mentioned the Agile project. That's why uh, that's where uh, we uh, 
also use SMT. Um, given its focus on derivative, SMT is already uh, synergetic with the OpenMDO. Um, so for example, I'll take uh, the example of um, uh, Bayesian or efficient global optimization. But of course, for us, it's low design variable number. That's very really important. Okay, it's not good enough right now to treat the high dimensional problem. Uh, so the SMT core capabilities has been adapted uh, by uh, a postdoc of University of Purdue, uh, Roy, uh, with uh, Justin. And the goal here was really to mix with also uh, discrete values. So you can have a look to this uh, paper. I think it's a, a good starting point for Amigo uh, problem. So in order to finish, I'll, I'll show you the classrooms. Uh, so we start a few years ago, uh, and Prof. Martins was there with John. And uh, if you remember, uh, Kim, you remember the MacBook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> no, here, on the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we develop a total um, MDO course of, uh, so that structural and uh, multidisciplinary optimization course. And from several years, uh, we have uh, approximately 10 hours of uh, MDO. And the practice uh, are all in uh, open MDO. Uh, so, um, what I can say uh, on these uh, classrooms, that we, we um, have, um, it depends uh, approximately uh, 20 students each year, uh, sorry, 40 students each year uh, since uh, three years. And we uh, try to apply it to CELA problem, SSBG, and we use also Open Aerostruct. Uh, and last year we used a, a launcher design project that you can find here, and that's Loïc and Mathieu from Onera that develop uh, the project. Uh, so if you want our uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, I think we can already share it with you. Uh, that's nice for starting. And uh, the link between education and research is done uh, using uh, OpenMDO for PhDs. Uh, okay, so we have short course for PhDs uh, on demand. And uh, here I really want to say that uh, OpenMDO is a nice documentation. It's really uh, nice to start. And uh, we have um, several projects uh, for coupling it with uh, DIMOS. Uh, so I, I don't have slides on it, but um, we already start uh, on this topic. And I think it's uh, promising. So I will finish by presenting you some uh, add-ons. So there is a, a nice uh, WhatsApp uh, open source program, which is developed by uh, uh, Remy over there. Uh, so the goal here, so you can find the link here. The goal here is a read that uh, uh, an engineer can uh, define and generate uh, an MDO problem and an XDSM really easily. Um, so you can find documentation, paper, and tutorials online. So if you're interested, I really encourage you to, to start with the tutorial. So it was presented last year at SciTech or Aviation. Uh, another add-on really uh, nice is, has been developed by okay, uh, IMCO. And you can find uh, OpenLigo and Cadmos, which are really interesting in order to uh, um, offer reconfiguration MDO problem. Okay, so you can find this here. So in conclusion, um, so MDO is the core of uh, aircraft uh, research design at Onera and Supero. Uh, efficient global optimization and SMT can offer a, a nice way to explore a new design. Uh, the multi-fidelity mixture of experts can help you to speed up the process. And I have some open question here. Um, so really need to develop or search for an optimizer for hybrid uh, design variable. So as we are in preliminary design, discrete, categorial, and continuous variable. So that's the tricky part. 
And probably uh, we already start. We have some new development in Julia, and I think there is a, a presentation uh, after me on this topic. Uh, so you can find Ego and SMT and uh, our last project, uh, Agile project, uh, is uh, now ready. So if you have questions, I'm open for questions. So I take uh, host prerogative. I, I want to draw a connection between some of your SMT stuff and some stuff that I think Garrett mentioned. Um, so we recently added like a new spline component and there's the multi-fidelity co-creaking and then all of SMT, obviously there's also scikit-learn. And uh, I think hearing about all of that and saying it out loud, it, it makes me realize that the surrogate modeling in OpenMDO, although we've tried to clean it up, is probably not the most organized thing. I think Garrett specifically said that like the component we added is sort of helpful, but also not helpful because you would prefer sometimes to use the splining library kind of as a part of a larger component. If I'm, if I'm. So I'll start by saying that our intention wasn't to like replace the existing splining library that you still could have used, but we thought there was a, there was a bunch of situations where we needed it componentized, so we just put it in there. Um, but I'm curious what folks think, how folks think we should be handling all of these surrogate modeling libraries and trying to make them as available as possible. Uh, maybe there's some sort of a formal or informal API that we could all, I mean, SMT has an API, it's pretty close to scikit-learn, but maybe OpenMDO could follow some kind of a design pattern so that anything that, that, is, all, that is a component could also be uh, used independently. So, I don't know if, if folks have general thoughts on surrogate modeling, but open to the so discussion. When we first did SMT, my first reaction was, let's contribute to scikit-learn. Right. Okay, scikit so learn wasn't. Yeah, so okay. that's why we went with and on that. Um, okay, well, maybe we should submit our Akima Spline, updated Akima Spline li library, library to SMT. Maybe that's the right way to do it. Yeah, and I think, you know, we'd be open to changing things around, but yeah. it's still not fully mature, I think. So. Okay. So I use SMT a lot of my own research, and I ran using OpenMDO. I'm wondering if there's, there's some utility to be made by having examples of wrapping SMT or even like an SMT meta model where you can use SMT within OpenMDO and there's some examples around that. Hooking up SMT to our existing meta model? Right, would that be of value? Because SMT has methods that aren't available in OpenMDO oh. meta model. Uh, you could use the same API but with the slight wrapper and you can look up the same API as you use it, for example. Uh, Santiago's nodding. What do you think, Garrett? I actually don't think surrogate modeling is open MDO's core competency. Right. Um, I think it has a lot of things to focus on and plenty of room for improvement on its core competency. And yeah, if there are better libraries out there to do surrogate modeling and then have a little open MDO wrapper like John was describing, that, that makes sense. So, I mean, we'll run into a similar problem fundamentally that we hit with optimizers where maybe everybody in this room is happy with SMT, but somebody else is going to come along and want scikit-learn or, or insert their other surrogate modeling. So, so just yeah. don't worry about it out of scope. Okay. Yeah, but maybe there's room for a, a common a pilot star style common mm -hmm. wrapper to um, meta modeling or surrogate models that would have SMT as well as second learn and other stuff. Yeah. And, but I agree, it's out of the core competency. So I think when you have a team of MDO yourself working on this, it's very tempting to say, oh, let's just add that to. Open MDO, and I think the right solution is nah. keep it separate, just wrap it. So to take that to an extreme, should we remove all the surrogate modeling libraries from OpenMDO and then release them as a separate plugin and just have some sort of interface code? That would be the, the left extreme, right? Yeah. I, I think uh, for novice users, keeping all the surrogate modeling Yeah, one, I think what Rob's getting at in terms of keeping, keeping something simple available, one slight distinction that's practical, <coughs> of practical importance for us is a difference between like interpolation and surrogate modeling. 
There's a lot of times where folks just have a table of data and they just need a smooth interpolation through it, which I, I recognize is a form of surrogate modeling. They're, they're mathematically equivalent or similar, but uh, none of the surrogate modeling tools out there gave us exactly the behavior we needed, which is why we wrote like this sort of dead simple interpolant type thing. Um, because NASA folks need that so commonly, I, I won't take that. Well, I guess I could take it out of the core and make it available as a plugin, but I, I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, I guess that's a fair point. So we could have a visual and do it having all the bases right. for a number of things you might want to do. Right. But then refer to more advanced plugins okay. like external. But make clear that they're available because otherwise people might think we just do it for things. Okay. I'd like to continue this thought. Specifically, I'm curious if you guys would be open to the idea of, of me removing things from OpenMDO via poem, right? So a future version which would break people's stuff uh, would, ha would not have that functionality, but in the process, we would either publish a plugin or, or make sure that you could recover that functionality through an additional library. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to eat into the next time, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you.